All right, guys, so we're going to go through the structure of a lay-ins hive or um, swarm trap. I apologize for sort of repeating myself, but I get questions um, from folks um, that I actually answered in a, a different episode, but I think the problem is, is that I'm not very entertaining, and so people, you know, speed scan through the... Um, the episode and they maybe missed some content and then have a question and ask a question even though it was in there so I repeat myself uh, in order to see if maybe I might be able to catch them on the next um, episode so the short of it is this let me just show you the pieces right you obviously have the, bo the box body with this it would take up to probably 10 frames uh, and the full um, B box in the, uh, what takes up 20 um, frames, okay? So, you take the top off. That's the only thing you need to do to access the hive, right? You don't have any supers or any, obviously doing anything with one hand. It's a bit of a challenge. We use the metal on the top, obviously, to help um, with the rain and preserve the life of the box. Okay, so this is what it looks like inside. I mean, the components inside are really simple, right? You obviously have your entrance. Uh, and then that goes into the hive itself. On the one end, where you have a vacant space, uh, we put a divider. A divider is nothing more or less than just a piece of plywood that slips down in that does not allow the bees to move from the hive over into this open area. Now, we do leave a small space at the bottom to allow air to flow, and some bees might, you know, get over in here. So that's not the end of the world. But in general, you're not leaving just open space because they'll do goofy stuff if you leave open space. They'll start building stuff in there, and obviously you don't want that. So you just leave a little bit for air so the air can flow through the box and keep them relatively dry. All right, so I'm going to move this divider just as I would if I was going to put in additional, in additional frames. If I was going to move put in additional frames, I would simply move the divider out, let's just say, for two frames like this. And then I would just slip two frames in. I'm barely bothering the bees. Yes, the bees are in this area and they can see you and you can see them, but that's minimal disruption, okay? So I'm gonna take this divider out, obviously, because I need to show you the interior structure of the, of the hive. Okay, so here, what you have is you have an inch and a half um, top board. It's an inch and a half sideboards that are then cut down to an inch, and they stay across an inch along the bottom. What that allows it to do is to touch each other at the top, but have a gap at the bottom so the bees can move between one frame and the next and the next. Okay, so that creates these gaps that you need, okay? Not just for airflow, but in that instance, obviously, bee movement too, because they will cover this entire, particularly in the core of the hive, um, they will obviously cover from top all the way to the bottom um, of that, and they will have to move underneath and around the frames. So that's why the frames are designed that way, okay? Now, the frames just slip down in there just like that, okay? And they have a 3 8 inch rabbit at the top that allows them to sit and be flush with the... Um, the uh, the, sh uh, the short walls. So the short walls come up three-eighths of an inch higher than the front and back walls, right? So that it all sits real nice when the lid's down on top of it. Now, for the swarm hive, let me show you. I'll take a couple of these frames out because I want to show you um, a couple of the components that I mentioned when I actually just showed you the swarm trap uh, in the tree, okay? So the first thing that you put into the, the, the hive or the trap is propolis, okay? So this is bee resin. And then the second thing in here, I see I just knocked one of these off um, when I just pulled those frames out. But this is the lemongrass oil in the slow release tubes. And they just get stapled uh, into the front wall. And then the frames just sit down you know, next to them, or there's even a gap that the, fr that the frame, you know, um, will sit there. And that way you have the, that, you produce that smell inside of here. So those are those two components. And that is essentially how a frame 
rests inside of the box to allow the bees and air to move inside while allowing you the solid structure along the top. So now that you've seen the way that the, uh, the um, frames function within the box, uh, what we'll do is I'll try to relatively quickly just run through uh, the uh, construction of the different components. So right now you're going to see uh, Tom quickly sort of cutting the uh, rabbits um, out of the ends of the top boards because as you saw, the, the, uh, the, the top board sits on top of the box in such a way that you have a three-quarter, three-eighths inch rabbit at the top. And then after that, we will move on to uh, drilling the holes. There needs to be four holes drilled in each of the tops and each of the bottoms. So in our instance, we ended up with 50 tops and bottoms, which means 100 uh, side rails. And then um, beyond that, what we'll do is once we get out of Tom's shop, uh, then I will show you just how you string uh, the wire on the frames. So here uh, Tom is obviously um, cutting the second part of the rabbit out of the, those uh, top boards. Uh, sorry, you'll see a little shakiness here. It seemed as though, obviously, the motor on the drill was vibrating the bench upon which is, this is sitting on. And, of course, the, the camera must have been on top of that. So I apologize for that. But I did want to just show you a couple things here. One is that he's got a pretty slick rig where it has a laser uh, which indicates the, you know, the X where the, where the drill will go down. So it makes it so much more efficient as far as him cutting these or, or, or drilling these four holes. But also, you know, it's a mundane process. I mean, it's just, that's the one thing about this box. It was sort of funny. Um, Tom, you know, like I said to you, you know, he's a real artist. I mean, he really builds just beautiful things. And, but it's his creativity and his design. And in this instance, it's, a, a, a plan that you're operating off of. And it's just, I mean, it's painfully mundane. Just drilling four holes for each of the top. And remember that there are 50 tops and 50 bottoms. And you had to do four holes for each one. And then it was the same thing, the rabbits. And then, um, as you saw on the frame structure for the side rails, each one of those had to be cut down from an inch and a half at the top of the side rail to an inch at the bottom of the side rail. So just be prepared if you're going to do this, that that's what you're going to face. Here we go. And then, of course, there's the assembly of all those uh, component pieces. And by this point, this is the end of the third day. And I'm not kidding you. We're talking, even with all this equipment, we're talking seven to eight hour days uh, for three straight days just to get to this point. And that's having built the boxes. Of course, they are the insulated boxes. And then to have built uh, the frames. And you'll notice that these don't even have the bottom uh, rails on there yet nor have they been strung. Uh, but that's, this is what we completed in the three days. And you know we were in borderline suicidal at this point. It's sort of funny that when I first saw um, the price for the boxes on, uh, what is it, horizontalhives.com, I was like, Dr. Leo, you're crazy. Why would you be uh, charging that much money? But I'll tell you, after having gone through this, I get it. I mean, I, I at least get it. Uh, it is a, an incredible amount of work if you want to go if you want to go through this. 
So, you know, at this point, let's face it, uh, I'm probably just speaking to myself because you can't even stand to watch uh, just 10 minutes and 6 seconds, 7 seconds, 8 seconds, 9 seconds of, 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 of watching this. Think about it, doing it for three days, right? And then, of course, having still have to, to do all the other parts. So, hey, at the end of the day is, uh, you know, have fun. Um, maybe we'll really uh, enjoy it once the bees start producing honey, right? Okay, here we go. I'm not going to make you watch any more of this. You, you, you're going to hate me. Okay, bye. So to wire these, you just take a couple screws, put them on the outside. We've already drilled four holes on both the top bar and the bottom bar. I think Dr. Leo said that uh, to use nails, but I don't know. We just found that screws are a little more secure. These, you know, these aren't super sturdy the wire actually will add some rigidity to the frames I think it's just a side benefit and then uh, because the wires are more prone to cut into the wood, you just have to think, okay, we're coming from the screw down into the hole and then position staples. Like that, I don't know if you can see that. <clears throat> so that the wire goes over the staple instead of directly onto the wood. I tried unraveling this for a certain number of rotations just to see if I could find some consistency. Yeah, there isn't any. Just, just using your uh, judgment once you've done it a bunch of times. See about how much wire you need because otherwise you know, you're trying to mess with that while you're messing with the frame at the same time. Not ideal, but it all works. And then as this comes through, just wrap it around the screw a couple times. You wrap it in the same direction that you're <clears throat> screwing it, helps snug it in. And then this doesn't really matter because you got to tighten these up anyway. They're quite loose and floppy. So this is sort of a little bit of an art form. Grab a hold of it 
put some tension on it, and then if you sort of bend it down to hold it with your thumb, slide over to the next one, and just keep doing that. Maybe there's a better way. It's the only, it's the way I've kind of come up with anyway. the same on the other side. Pull it tight, wrap it around the screw. Because the wire is not too thick, it'll sort of break off itself. Again, wrap it in the direction that you're going to screw. Helps to snug it up. You learn that when you're doing a lot of outlets for electrical work. So you can see end screw and you can see that the wire goes over the staple each way that way again just hoping that you limit the uh, opportunity for the wire to cut into the wood and then this just slides on into the box and obviously the outside of this has to be painted so anyway